Welcome to the It's Your Fate podcast. Conversations to guide your steps and light your path in deciding your definite major purpose. I'm your host, Lefford Fate. Hello, this is Lefford Fate. And in this series of 17 podcast episodes, which is hosted by my good friend and colleague, Mike Saunders, you're going to learn about the principles to a positive mental attitude. Welcome back. Today we have with us Napoleon Hill Certified Leader Grant Campbell talking about principle number one, which is definiteness of purpose. Grant, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Well, super, let's get started with this principle because it's always neat when you see a whole program of several principles or laws and you're talking about the first one because that tends to set the tone for everyone to follow. So tell us a little bit about what definiteness of purpose is and why is it relevant for today? Okay, well, thanks, Mike. Uh, I think uh, definiteness of purpose is as relevant today as it was when Napoleon Hill first penned that expression. Today, people try uh, a variety of different things, uh, you know, a flavor of the month technique, all of this to um, find fulfillment, purpose, or even uh, the why behind what they want and why they want it. So this being... Uh, the first principle is so appropriate. Napoleon Hill referred to this as the starting point of all achievement. So that places a significant emphasis on beginning with the end in mind. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, uh, point from the Stephen Covey uh, writings, because if you don't have some direction where you're headed, where are you going to go today, tomorrow, and the next day? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and in actuality, um, that concept is also contained in the martial art because um, a variety of different traditions abide by that concept of understanding the totality of the situation that you're in before you even act. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's a very uh, key point. I think Mr. Covey actually... Uh, pulled that from the martial arts as well. You know, with definiteness of purpose, there's two things going on, in, in my opinion. So I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, having the purpose is, is kind of like what you mentioned, you know, the, the uh, why. And that we hear that so much today. But having mm-hmm. that be so clarified and defined, doesn't that prevent, if you're, if you're implementing this principle to its fullest, that prevents kind of the moving target, like you said, flavor of the day, where someone would go, oh, here's my why, my purpose is X, but they really don't, they're not all in. They're, they didn't burn the boats. They're not in with both feet because they know that, yeah, if it doesn't work out, I'll just change it and, and I'll try it. And, and it's kind of a moving target. But this definiteness of purpose, that's like you're all in. It's rock solid. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the things that comes through understanding and embracing the principle is that specialization is required. When you talk about someone that specializes in a particular thing or field, you're talking about someone that has an understanding of one of the most basic concepts, again, that that, uh, Dr. Hill emphasizes, which is repetition is the mother of skill. Yeah. You can be a jack of all trades and a master of none. In this day and age, specialization is really one of the things that separates those that achieve outstanding results from those that just do whatever it is we're talking about. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point, and and I think what you people find when they start putting this into practice is um, they're not all over the place. They don't have that shiny object syndrome like this pops up and they go, ooh, let's try this, because they immediately evaluate it and say, oh, you know what, hold up. That's interesting, but that doesn't line up with my definiteness of purpose. Absolutely. It avoids distraction. Yep. It actually It actually makes it so that, you're pulled in the direction of of your purpose as opposed to having to exert all of this 
extra energy and force this thing to happen. When you're clear about why you're doing something, it, it, it facilitates the entire process and the entire system of doing things. And the other thing that I would suspect is the case is when you start focusing on something and, uh, you know, kind of like different areas of uh, the reticular activator in your brain kick in and go, ooh, since we're focused on this, then here's a good idea or here's a good opportunity or here's something to notice. And I think that sometimes there's opportunities all around us that we don't pick up on because we're just so all over the place or not focused, right? So this having this purpose and being definite about it, now all of a sudden you're like, ooh, that's a good idea. Let's, let's uh, add this into here because it fits. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. You know, um, a lot of experts will talk about, um, you know, going over your goals on a regular basis. And why would they, why would they say that for exactly the reason that you, you just specified? Yes. You know, the reticular activating system being, being a natural process in our brain that, that helps us to see things that are important to us, important to our survival. And that's, that's being utilized to draw us closer to our goals. So as you said, we see opportunities that if we were not focused, if we were not sure of our reason why and had that passion, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be paying attention. We wouldn't see those as opportunities. We might even see them as obstacles. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so, you know, um, I think that even through some of these points we've made here uh, so far, there could tend to be a misconception around having a purpose and being definite about it. What have you seen regarding misconceptions? One of the, one of the biggest mistakes that I think I see people make and why sometimes people will become disillusioned is because they confuse the why of something with the purpose of it. They'll be confused about the difference between having a goal and having that definite purpose for your life. Having the purpose um, generally differs from goals because goals are kind of like steps that are accomplished as you move toward what your purpose is. Purposes are, you know, uh, how can I put it? Purposes that are self-serving don't permit personal growth. They don't encourage fulfillment of the individual, and they don't contribute to anyone else. So the difference in a definite purpose, when we say, what is the purpose of your life? What is your life's mission? That should connect you to other people. Yeah. Okay? If your life mission is merely to make money, you're misunderstanding a goal from a purpose. Yeah, uh, kind of like the the missing the forest for the trees. You know, the thirty thousand foot view exactly. is your purpose, but you're in the weeds and in the trees. That's you know, let me make some money. But yeah, you're that. I really exactly. like that. Uh, that's a well put for that misconception. You know, probably at some point in your life, <clears throat> you were not definite in your purpose. So once you started fine tuning this and applying this to your life, what changes positively did you see um, after putting this into use, personal and professionally? Well, absolutely. Grow, growing up, you, you're you're uncertain in many cases about which direction, what approach, what system, all of this kind of thing, and how you're going to get stuff done. Um, once I understood how to apply my skills, how to apply and develop my passion, and to connect that to others. Things just opened up. They just changed. Um, I noticed that I didn't have the same questions that other people had. Hmm. And that promoted a serenity, like a fulfillment. Uh, you know, I'm. It, it, it's difficult to describe because I feel almost as though 
I, I was exposed to these teachings so early on that fulfillment has never really been an issue for me. You know, they, I know I know and have friends and, and encounter people that they've spent years doing life and doing what it is and doing everything they thought they were supposed to do, and then they got to a station in life where they wondered, is this all I get? Yeah. Is this is this all it's about? And it's a confusing time. But I've uh, you know, I've been connected to other people my entire life, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do at the age of seven, and I did that, meaning I had a purpose in everything that I did, and of course. Things didn't, that doesn't mean things always worked out the way I wanted them to, but behind that was a sense of purpose and dedication to something that was much bigger than just me, and it offered benefits to more than just myself. Mm. So at times when I felt down, it stood me up, literally, and made me move forward. And I think that is something that uh, I feel I want to be able to encourage and help other people and explain more about that whole process because I experienced that directly. And the, uh, the, the teachings of Napoleon Hill so eloquently put together um, the, the experience of um, developing your passion commitment and moving forward with your life and that being a life of purpose. Yeah, that's strong. You know, it made me think of a question and I want to see if you've worked with a person or client that you helped them implement definiteness of purpose. But I want to, I want to frame it around this. Um, you may have an example of, yes, I worked with this person and, and here's how that helped their life and that's excellent. But add in, um, what if someone comes to you and you're working with them and they don't have their definiteness of purpose at age seven like you did and they feel, man, I'm 47, I'm 37 and I don't have that, it's too late or what's the use? So you know, th uh, can you share with us an example of how this principle has helped someone you've worked with and then should someone feel like, wow, um, I, I didn't have this figured out when I was younger? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's one one reason I I rarely even talk about that particular um, situation and, and my own yeah. sense of purpose is because a lot of people can't relate to that. A lot of people can't necessarily relate to understanding what's important in life early on, um, and and I need to explain that a little bit. One of the one of the things that I feel and believe very strongly motivates all human behavior is pleasure or pain. And early on in my life, I had a lot of pain as a result of bullying and intense situations that, that happened as a result of my health when I was very, very young. So being in a situation where I couldn't do what other people could do and I was taken advantage of, and, um, you know, my parents were raising me a certain way, I knew that was wrong. And once I discovered at a young age a system or a, the path by which to empower myself, that led me to wanting to empower other people. And that's how that came about. I'm not like some prodigy or any of that kind of thing that uh, just had it all figured out at a young age. I was a kid that um, grew up in a very, very rough area of New York, and um, I was fortunate because I was able to take a negative and turn it into a positive. Yeah. Now, with regard to um, helping other people, I've had many 
people over the years. One example would be a a kid who was uh, he was on the wrong path. He was he was literally um, quitting school. He saw really no hope of doing anything other than what was in the street hmm. and living the street life, which includes drugs and, you know, thuggery and all kinds of things like that. And um, this kid noticed that I was teaching other people and I had a certain attitude. He always saw that and he saw how other people related to me. And he got involved in a conversation with me once uh, simply because it was raining and uh, we were both looking for cover from the rain in New York at that time and we were, we were right next to each other. So what winds up happening is uh, he gets into this conversation with me and I, I speak about what it is that I do and and uh, he asked me, how, how'd you get into that? I told him a little bit about it. And uh, I said, what do you do? He says, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm out here in the street. I'm, out, I'm, out, you know, I'm doing my thing. And I said, real simple, I said, why do you do that? Hmm. And he gave me an answer, and I said, is that true? Is it true that you have to do that? in order to make money and survive. Is that all you've got? Is that all you can be? And you know the chances of you surviving to do something bigger and greater are really small. You know how that world works. And I spoke to him from the heart and just said, you probably have more going for you than you're giving yourself credit for. And when you're really interested in being a little more than what you are right now, come and see me, and I'll make time for you. Hmm. And this kid wound up seeing me the next week, enrolling in one of my programs, and fast forward 10 years later, he's an engineer. Wow. Right now, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I'm very proud of that. Um, I still check in with his family, and you know they still get in touch with me from time to time. So it's uh, it's just been just a whirlwind ride being able to uh, to help people and expose people to other options. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Hey, so um, I know you touched a little on this from your background, but what specifically was it that inspired you to look at and become a, a Napoleon Hill certified leader? And then in, in what words of encouragement would you give to others looking at potentially uh, doing the same thing? Well, that's simple. It, when it comes to, you know, the um, personal development field, there are a few giants and a few that have pioneered the field. Napoleon Hill is uh, probably the most significant figure in the, uh, in the personal development field that uh, from his teachings, many others arose. Many others have renamed. They've... Uh, put their own twist on it, but it essentially is the the grandfather of all the other systems of development that people have uh, flocked to. And I think there's no higher authority or, or more proficient authority than the Napoleon Hill Foundation when it comes to disseminating the knowledge and information of uh, Dr. Napoleon Hill. I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Hey, so let's uh, go ahead. Yeah, I think if you're if you're interested in 
applying the teachings and, and want to or think that you would want to share the benefits of it with others, I would encourage people to go to the uh, to the foundation. Excellent. So, Grant, let, let's think about something here. We've talked a lot about definiteness of purpose, and we've talked about how some of the changes that you've really applied to people or helped them apply to their life. Um, let's wrap it up with with what some some next steps you know i think there's a big difference between knowing and doing or strategy and tactics so what do you think some some implementation steps would be for someone that they could take this and put this into action in their life good question i think that um plans of that type need to be kept simple so i think We'll have five steps, and we'll call it an action plan for developing a definiteness of purpose. And this is something that I, I teach to others as well. Um, the first step is your definite major purpose must be important to you. It sounds pretty simplistic, but it has to really matter to you. It has to be something you believe in, something that you're committed to, something that drives you, something that must be. It's, it's not something that should be. It's something that must be. And that helps you to develop the passion within you and also the strength within you that it's going to take to turn that into a reality. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. Next, I would say it should serve the people around you. You don't live in a vacuum. And we already understand that we, we are designed to work together as a species. We can mu get much further along in life working with others than we can by ourselves. And your purpose needs to connect to other people. I think, thirdly, your definite purpose should enhance your growth as a person because that's one of the most basic needs that we all have spiritually and otherwise. We need to grow as people. I think passion has to be a, a, an important ingredient in forming your major purpose. You know, your services, your talent should all be interrelated to form that purpose. And then the last step is simply to act on it. Do something about it. Don't just have goals. Don't just have this purpose and not work toward it. Mm. It has to be worked at diligently. So those would be the keys to determining um, a major purpose as far as I'm concerned. And you go through each step and you don't leave it out, and if you don't know the answer, you can involve friends, you can involve other people that you trust, but those steps, I think, are key, and anyone that I've encountered over the years that has achieved outstanding results and lives a quality of life that they're proud of has done these, these five steps. Excellent. Well, Grant, thank you so much for your time today. It was really great talking through this one uh, principle, definiteness of purpose. What's the best way that uh, people could reach out and connect with you? Well, if anyone is interested, they can, uh, they can connect through my website. It's uh, grantcampbell.net. Excellent. Well, Grant, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate getting to know you and talking about this wonderful principle. It was my pleasure, Michael. Thank you. You've been listening to the It's Your Fate podcast. To connect with me and pick up a copy of one of my books, please visit www.leffordfate.com. That's leffordfate.com. You've met your fate. Now let's walk into your destiny.